Welcome to the evening services of the Double Springs Church of Christ. We appreciate you coming in and joining us this last Lord's Day of the year and worshiping by means of our YouTube channel. We appreciate the guys uh, making this possible upstairs and, and um, allowing us to continue our evening worship. Appreciate, looking forward to a good lesson Vance will have for us here momentarily. Don's going to lead us in opening prayer, and I'm going to lead us in a closing prayer. We have some to mention on our sick list. We're grateful to announce that some are better, and for that we're appreciative. We continue to remember Jerry Rutland. He's at home with shingles. He went back to the doctors this week, but let's keep him in our prayer. She's still suffering with that. Elaine Garrison will have another cataract surgery tomorrow, and let's keep her in our prayers. Uh, Charles Tench, this is the father of Denny Tench. He's now at home, and as we mentioned on Wednesday, doctors may think this was a seizures instead of a stroke, and let's keep him in our prayers. Marjolyn Parker remains at Huntsville Hospital. Richard Beal, this is the father of Allison Moody. Um, Roger and Dorinda's daughter-in-law. We mentioned that her father was going to have a biopsy for prostate. He come back for cancer, and he had surgery this past week. The surgery was contained, but they are going to send off all the um, so the different things, the cancers for the pathology, and to see if he needs treatments. And I know they would appreciate our prayers for his recovery and also potential uh, treatments in the future. Larry Alexander. This is the preacher at the White's Chapel uh, Church of Christ. In Fett County, he suffered a heart attack last Sunday. Um, he's doing maybe a little better, uh, but still still struggling uh, in St. Vincent's East. Uh, several of our folks on the COVID list are doing better, and for that we're thankful. Uh, we've been remembering all of these families. Some of these are coming out of their quarantine this week, and uh, let's, let's remember them. Uh, the Stevens, Bart Shannon, Jeff and Diana, uh, Evelyn and Roy Lee Hicks. I believe Evelyn's, I believe she's still in the hospital at Killer. Uh, Wanda Hodge, uh, she's doing much better. Kevin and Susan Thomas. Uh, Kim uh, made some improvement. Greg Rooks remains on a ventilator in Coleman, uh, but still doing some better. Uh, Tommy Edwards, Mark Posey, uh, Tammy Glover, uh, Tim Hodge, uh, Tammy Osmer. Uh, one we uh, need to mention is Clark Beasley. This will be the brother to Callie Alexander. She, she teaches at our tech center. Um, he's been seriously ill with COVID and has been in and out of the hospital at Winfield. I know they would appreciate our prayers. And a couple to add to our prayer list, uh, Matt Brewer has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And one teacher in our community, Dana Baker, she's had it over the holidays and she's been struggling mightily with it. Uh, let's remember Clyde Garrison. He had a second x-ray on his ankle and foot and still not healing properly. Uh, so let's keep in our prayers and he'll have a doctor's appointment on January the 4th about some tests uh, that he's had recently. David Thomaston, this is John's brother, received a good report from his PET scan, no cancer was found. Uh, Nikki McCreelis, um, he's in a regular room and is making some improvement. Uh, Shannon Dempsey, he followed up with his doctor uh, recently after having um, his leg amputated um, and he's recovering at home and doing pretty well. Uh, let's remember those dealing with cancer treatments. Uh, Kenneth Whittemore, Ricky Riddle, Leanne May, Willadine Terrell, Nanny Pinkard, Rob Ray, Shelby Edwards, Bean Green, and Evelyn Hicks. And let's remember those in our daily prayers, um, those who are shut in. And let's, let's keep contact with them and praying for them. Shelly Algeen, uh, Karine Hutton, Burt Jones, uh, James Thomas. Uh, James is actually in Virginia uh, visiting his son. And so we're thankful he was able to make that trip. Uh, but let's, let's keep contact with Mr. Thomas and pray for him. Tim and Kathy, uh, Terry and Sue Cavender, Roberta Garrison, uh, Ted and Lowell, uh, Lois Nelson, Frankie Hyatt, and Randy Harbin. We have one death to mention. Uh, Geraldine Wilson passed away early this morning, and her funeral uh, will be a graveside service later this week in Hackleburg. If you could take Reba to dialysis, please sign the list outside the fellowship hall. Uh, Christmas cards, if you've not had a chance to pick those up, most people have. Those will remain there uh, through next Sunday um, if you want to get those um, for your family. Don't forget our blood drive uh, will be January the 22nd by the Red Cross, especially if you can give plasma. That's one thing they're needing. Uh, please mark January. It's on a Friday, Friday, January 22nd on your calendar. As far as our worship services, we continue as we have the last few weeks. We'll have a meeting on Sundays at 1030. Uh, we'll have a devotional streamed on Wednesdays on our YouTube channel. Um, also, Sunday evening services will be streamed on our YouTube channel. Uh, our teenage cl class will meet on Zoom at 6.45 on Wednesdays and 2 o'clock on Sundays. And Bible Hour, that will be to be determined each week, and you'll be sent a text message about that. And don't forget our adult class resumes this week. We begin a new study, and we'll begin at 7 o'clock. Um, that invitation will be sent out. 
after a week off, uh, Greg will have another devotional this week, and we look forward to his excellent studies. Now, that's all the announcements that I have. Let's worship together. you have blessed us with. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we've already had this morning to come together and to assemble here at the building and to worship you. And Father, now as the evening closes around us, we're thankful for another opportunity we have, this time virtually, to gather together and to worship you again. Father, it's our desire 
that the things that we say, the songs that we sing, the prayers that are offered, and even the very thoughts of our mind will be focused on you, honoring and glorifying you. Father, we thank you for this great opportunity, and we pray that each of us who participate in this worship service will be encouraged and blessed by our time invested in this service. Father, uh, Justin has given us a long list of sick. Father, our minds are uh, focused and we're so concerned about the COVID-19 virus. Father, we know that it plagues our, our community and our nation and even the world. Father, we have many members who are struggling with this uh, disease. And Father, it's our prayer that you would bless each of them. Father, we rejoice with those who are doing better and we're so thankful for your care and your blessings for them. But Father, we know that there are many in our area and among our membership that are struggling with this uh, disease and we pray that you would bless them, that you would strengthen them and Father, through your providence that you would heal them. Father, we also know there are many others who struggle and, and have problems with other diseases like cancer and heart disease and, and other things. And Father, in, in this time where we're so concerned about the virus, sometimes it's easy to neglect these other people. Father, we pray for those who have cancer. We pray for those who are taking treatments for cancer, those who have heart disease and those who have been injured in accidents. Father, we pray that you would bless each of these, that you would bless their families. And Father, we also know there are some who've lost their lives. Father, we especially want to ask your prayers to be on the family of our sister, Geraldine Wilson. We pray that you would bless, bless them as they go through this period of mourning and that you would bless them as they go through the weeks and months ahead. Father, we also realize and, and we recognize that we're in a time in our country where we go through a transition of power. And Father, we're so thankful that we live in a, in a place and in a country where these transitions are peaceful. Father, we thank you for the leadership of our country and Father, we pray for our new leaders as they begin to assume power in our country. Father, it's our prayer that as they lead us, that they will do so in a manner that will draw our entire country closer to you. Father, please bless us when we follow your will. And Father, please defeat us when we do not. Father, we're thankful for the church here at Double Springs. We thank you for each and every member. We're thankful for all of the diligent hard work that goes into making this congregation what it is. Father, we thank you for our eldership. We thank you for our deacons, and we ask that you bless them. Thank you for Vance and Justin and for their families. Father, we're also thankful for all of those who work so diligently in other areas to, to, to make this church uh, what it is in this community. And, and Father, it's our prayer that, that the church here at Double Springs will be a shining light in our town, in our community, and, and around the world. Father, we know that we sin often. Father, it's our desire that we would live sinless lives, but Father, we know that we, we fail you and we disappoint you and we do things and say things and think things that are wrong. Father, we are so grateful for Jesus. We're thankful for the great sacrifice that he made on the cross for us, that he was willing to go to the cross and suffer uh, the disgrace and suffer all the pain and agony. And Father, we recognize that it's our sins that held him on the cross. And Father, we're, we're thankful that, that he was willing to do that, that he loved us enough to do that. And Father, we're thankful for your grace and for your mercy. And Father, we're especially thankful that you're patient with us. Father, please forgive us when we sin. And Father, please strengthen us and help us to resist the temptations of Satan that we encounter on a daily basis. Father, please bless us now as we go through this worship service. Please help us to focus our minds on you. Please help us to listen to Brother Vance as he leads us in this discussion and, and lesson. Father, we pray that every word that he says will be a blessing to us and that we can uh, be closer to you because of the time we've spent here to this evening. Father, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
you for being a part of our worship this evening. I want us to open our Bibles and study from God's Word. It's interesting that we have already transitioned into another season. This past week was the beginning of winter. In Genesis 8, verse 22, the Bible says, While the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest, day and night, cold and heat, summer and winter shall not cease from the earth. And God's been faithful, and we have seen that. We've had some cold days, but today has been a beautiful day. And now as the evening shadows have drawn about us, I want us to open our minds and our, our Bibles to a lesson from God's holy word. I want us to think about some lessons from 2020. Joshua said in Joshua 14 in verse 10, really recording the words of Caleb, God hath kept me alive for these 80 and 5 years. And God has kept us alive, if we live just about four more days, uh, through uh, another year upon this earth. This has been a unique year. This year is almost gone, and it at least is a year to be remembered. It may have been the most eventful of many years past. It may have been the most eventful in your life, maybe ever. And I think most of us, none of us really wanting to kind of wish our life away, uh, but we would like to kind of get this year behind us. We know that when Friday morning, Lord willing, comes around and we pass into another year, that it'll not be magic of where everything will just change. But we hope that next year is a little different than this year's been. Time and experience are great teachers. Laban said in Genesis 30 and verse 27, I have learned from experience. Job 32 and verse 7 says, Days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes we're real uh, slow to learn even the lessons of history. Uh, but I hope that the days have spoken and that this year has taught us some things. But ask us maybe what lessons have we learned? Philippians 1 verse 12, Paul said, The things which have happened unto me have fallen out to the furtherance of the gospel. Just think about some things maybe that have happened this year, maybe to you or to your family or just in life around us from day to day. In Job chapter 1 and verse 13, the Bible says, There was a day when all of Job's children had gathered together in the eldest son's house. I wondered at the end of that year, when Job looked back on that year, it must have been quite an interesting inventory that he would take. This year ends with hospitals full, with funeral homes having to tighten their schedules to bury the dead. So I want us to notice just a few lessons from 2020. Number one, think about the brevity of life. It almost seems like about a month ago that we were kind of ringing in the bell, so to speak, for 2020. And uh, it almost seems like that's just been a month or two ago. And here this year is already going down in history. Psalm 37 and verse 25 says, I have been young, but now I'm old. And this year carries us all in that stage from being younger to being older. In Acts 7 verse 58, the Bible says that they laid the garments as they stoned Stephen at the feet of a young man named Saul. And then in Philemon verse 9, Paul refers to himself as Paul the aged. And I've often said that we can go from that being a young man to an aged man uh, rather quickly. And as we look back over 2020, uh, I think we'd have to say, that tells us about the brevity of life. The psalmist said in Psalm 90 and verse 10, possibly a psalm of Moses, when he talked about the days of our years being three score and ten, if by reason of strength they'd be four score years. But notice he said we're soon cut off and we fly away. James said in James chapter 4, what is your life? It's even a vapor. And I think we can see that as we kind of look back over 2020 and how Quickly, it is past. Job said in Job 14, man that's born to woman is a few days full of trouble, cometh forth as a flower, and is cut down, fleeth as a shadow, and continueth not. Peter said, for all flesh is grass, and the glory of man is the flower. 
grass withers and the flower falls. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 24. This year will be unique, the coming up for me, because being born in 1956, the year 2021, has kind of a, a unique place in history for somebody that's born in 1956. In 2020, 2021, folks born in 1956 turned 65. So on March 27th of this coming year, Lord willing, I will be eligible to receive benefits of Medicare. And that has kind of hit me with a sobering uh, reality that, that life is brief because uh, it doesn't seem that I have been on this earth nearly that many years. Number two, when I think about another lesson of 2020, I, I think about the uncertainty of, of many things in general. First Timothy 6 and verse 17, Paul said, Charge them that are rich in this world's goods, that they be not high-minded, and are trust in uncertain riches. There are a lot of things that are uncertain, and there have been a lot of uncertainties that we have seen in 2020. What a hurricane season we saw. I mean, it, it was unique. Uh, we had so many named storms. We went through the English alphabet and way into the Greek alphabet. It was a unique year in that way. And you think about all the uncertainty that lies around just storms. Water, wind, sometimes fires created by storms. And all of this uh, brings about the uncertainty of things. I'll never forget, uh, back in March, early March, my brother had been living in Michigan for 47 years. And he said, I've never seen the economy as good as it was in Michigan the first week of March. And the last week of March, he said, I've never seen the economy as bad as it was in 47 years. And that's just kind of the way it was for this year. And all the uncertainties that surround us. And here's Lord willing on Friday of this week when we start a, another year. We're going to start a year one of these years that we'll never finish. Uh, Sister Geraldine last night uh, passed from this life and and uh, 2020 was that year for her that she would start. She turned 85 two Sundays ago. And she would start this year, but she would not finish this year. There will be a year for you and for me that we will begin, that we will not end. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 6 talks about how brittle the thread of life is. And you just think about things when they get brittle, uh, they can break real easily. And that passage talks about the brittleness and the thinness as the thread of life. Tomorrow may find me among my family and among my friends and among my brethren. Or it might find me in the presence of my God. Think about COVID-19. I think it's called 19 because actually it was actually kind of started last year. Uh, Think about cancer, you think about heart attacks, or you think about accidents. Justin's mentioned one that we love so much, Brother Larry Alexander. And uh, just, you know, life's going on good for Larry. I was in his home not too long ago, enjoyed the evening. And uh, just such a wonderful man, a great wife and, and great family, doing a great work in the area in which he lives, and now struggling for his life. I think about Geraldine Cagle this last year and being killed in that accident in the lawnmower. Think about Connie Parker, uh, a very sweet lady, uh, cousin of Chris Posey, uh, just a couple weeks ago, and a host of others. There's so many uncertainties of life in general, and I hope that 2020 has, has, has taught us something. Paul said in Acts 21 and verse 13, I am ready, I'm ready to die, and I hope that we will try to live each day ready to meet the Lord because of the uncertainties that surround us. Number three, I think about the certainty of death. Uh, it can't be ignored. Uh, and this has been a unique year for death. Here at Double Springs, we've lost now eight members of our congregation. That's a lot of, a lot of members for a church no larger than we are. We started out on January the 3rd of this year with the death of Brother J.B. Walker. Just a couple weeks later, the death of Brother Herschel Curtis. Then there was the death of Betty Pollard, Miss Edith Pierce, and Virginia Humphreys, and Miss Gladys Thomas, and Lee Hamby, 
and just last evening, Geraldine Wilson. And Geraldine Cagle, I always thought of Geraldine as still right here with us because she was with us for so long. And if Geraldine Wilson's funeral is by Thursday, that will have been 22 funerals that I have spoken at this year. I have seen death. We grieve with the Moody family and the death of those within the womb all the way up to the death of 100-year-old Sister Bertha Blackwood, the long surviving daughter of Gus and Matilda Nichols. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5 says, The living know that they shall die. I hope we realize that just a little bit better. Don't know the lady's name in 2 Samuel 14, 14, when she said, For we must needs all die, and there is water spilt upon the ground that cannot be gathered together again. It's an appointment we'll keep, Hebrews 9, verse 27. And Adam all shall die, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, 15 rather, in verse 22. Lesson number four to think about from this year, it pays to listen to the Lord. You just think about that. Proverbs 13, 15 says, the way of the transgressor is hard. But there is a way uh, that's better than that. And that's the way of the Lord. It pays to listen to him. I hope I've learned that a little bit better this year. He that will love life and see good days, 1 Peter 3 and verse 30, uh, verse 10 rather. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 15, let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, or a busybody in other men's matters. You know, living for the Lord, you don't suffer that way. There's a better life than suffering that way because God directs us in a better way to be guilty of doing those things. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus talked about the life of a hundredfold. There is a life. It pays to listen to the Lord. I'll never forget one of our jail services years ago. A gentleman sitting there, not too old. We sung the song, I've decided to follow Jesus. And tears streaming down his face. He said, I wish I'd have decided to follow the Lord a long time ago. John 8, 47 says, He that is of God heareth God's word. John 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. John 10, and verse 4, Jesus talked about again in that chapter, his sheep listening to his voice. Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. 1 Samuel 3, verse 9, and verse 10. Acts chapter 3, verse 23, Whosoever will not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed. It pays to listen to the Lord. I read an interesting little story this week that emphasizes what's important to us and, and what do we listen for. A Native American and his friend were in downtown New York City walking near Times Square at lunch. You imagine in the summertime how, how busy that is and people everywhere and horns are blowing and taxis squealing around the corners. And, and suddenly this Native American said, I hear a cricket. And his friend said, what? You hear a cricket? And all this rustle and bustle, uh, you hear a cricket. He said, yeah, I hear a cricket. And he stopped and listened. He said, I hear it. And he walked across the street to where there was a big shrub basket. And he looked, and sure enough, there was a cricket. And that man said, you must have superhuman ears. He said, no, it's, it all depends on what you're, what you're listening for. And he pulled some coins out of his pocket, and he just threw them down on the sidewalk. And everybody within 20 feet turned at the sound of those coins hitting the sidewalk. He said, now, look at that. That, that tells you it all depends upon what you're listening for and what's important to you. I hope I've learned this year to pay a little more attention to the Lord's voice. Matthew chapter 13. It's also found in Isaiah 6, found in Acts 28, when the Bible talks about their ears being dull hearing, their eyes are closed, their hearts wax gross. Are we listening to the Lord? Lesson number five. The seriousness of being unprepared. I'll never forget an insurance man by the name of Bill Rayburn. I think a lot of Bill still uh, still have some insurance with him, actually. 
He's one of our missionaries now. And, uh, but he made a little statement one time. He said, there are many people that are not planning to fail, but they fail to plan. Now, he was talking about financial things. I thought of that, and I think I did a sermon on it. Many people not planning to fail, but failing to plan. Let's think about the seriousness of being unprepared. Our country was somewhat unprepared for what hit us, weren't we? Schools were unprepared. Churches were unprepared. And even right now, our world stands kind of waiting for a vaccine. And people are dying. I know Tim Hodge took the vaccine a week ago Friday and then was given a positive uh, reading on Monday. And uh, Charity, our youngest daughter, took the vaccine one day uh, this last week. And, and we pray that this will kind of turn the tide at, at some point. But think of all of the death that has happened this year and judgment that follows. And, and were these people prepared? Think about the seriousness of being unprepared as we've kind of looked at a world that was unprepared for what has happened the Bible teaches us to be prepared for death. That farmer in Luke 12 and the rich man in Luke 16, they were not ready for death. Paul said, I'm ready for death in Acts 21 and verse 13. In Matthew 25, we see the example in the parable of the virgins, some that were not ready. And then the, the parable of the talents and then the judgment scene, there were people that were not prepared. As we think about a world that was unprepared, let's make sure that we are prepared. Set thine house in order for thou shalt die and not live. Acts 38 and verse number, uh, Isaiah 38 and verse number 1. Let's make sure that we are prepared. Another lesson that I've learned from this year is the power of Satan. You just think about Satan. Luke 22 verse 30. Satan hath desired that he might have you and sift you as wheat. Peter said he walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. In 2 Corinthians 4, in verse 4, it talks about him blinding the minds of them that believe not, lest the gospel should shine to them. In Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 11, the Bible talks about put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Revelation 20, in verse 10, it talks about him deceiving us. In Ephesians 4, in verse 27, it says, do not give him place. In 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. You remember in the parable of the sower, in Luke 8, verse 12, he snatched that seed out of the wayside soil. And if he's not successful with that, that person never obeyed the gospel, but he's not successful with that, then he has other weapons. In verse 13 14, talks about, you know, the riches and the pleasures and cares of life and the struggles and the afflictions that he will use even then to try to pull people away. Think about how many people have become unfaithful this year. And it breaks our heart that they've turned and walked no more with the Lord. John 6 and verse 66. And like the dog that returns to his vomit in the south of the mud in 2 Peter 2, many have this year. Many people have been convinced that coming together is, is, is optional. And that's so sad. And I'm not advocating that people ought to uh, throw caution to the wind and and be with us, but it, it really it really breaks your heart to know that some people will never return to the assembly because of the power of Satan. Number seven, when I think about some things that hopefully have been learned this year, it's some things that are more important than other things. I was sitting with my oldest grandson in a shooting house the other day, and, and he had missed a real nice buck, and and I said, Braden, there are more important things than, than deer. There are more important things than deer hunting. And he knows that. And, and, uh, but there are things that are more precious than gold. And I hope we've learned that this year. You think about the Lord. Psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 57, Thou art my portion, O Lord. And may God help us to be a people that put him first. Think about the importance of the Bible. Oh, it's been our companion this year, hasn't it? You just think about the Bible. It's been our companion this year. And when we have shed tears, we, we've turned to those pages. It talks about where there will be no more tears. And when we've had, and several of us, and me included, you know, the doctors looked at us and said, you've got cancer. 
It's even terminal cancer or something not done about it. And we've gone to God's word and we put our trust there. And think about the church that shared our sorrow. May we never bring shame upon it. May we put it first. May we realize how blessed we are to be a part of it. Think about Christian fellowship. What a joy that is and how that's more important than so many things of this world. And we've missed some of that fellowship this year. At the class at 6th Avenue, the Gus Nichols School of Biblical Studies, I, I just run into students all along and we're, we're, we're hurting because we're not getting to enjoy that sweet fellowship. And gospel meetings and singings together this year that have been canceled. And then think about our families and how important they are. More precious than gold. There's some things that are more important than other things. Let's keep them in their perspective. I hope heaven has gotten more attractive to you. There have been so many people that have departed over the last few years. And I really believe I've reached that point where I know more people who have died than I know alive. I hope these lessons will be helpful to us. Number eight. I think about the never-ending need to grow spiritually. Justin talked about last Lord's Day being strong. And, and may God help us to be stronger. Our faith needs to be stronger. Our love needs to be deeper. Our hearts need to become purer. Our hope needs to shine brighter. Our ties to this old world need to be weakened. May God help us to grow spiritually. Next to last, I think about the power of little things that I have seen this year. I've seen medical workers uh, go to the second mile and further. I've seen little, even young children trying to make an impact in this world. A little boy just on the news a couple of nights ago had come up with some kind of way and had raised several thousand dollars to help the needy. You think about a kind word. Proverbs 25, verse 11 talks about a word fitly spoken. Luke 4, verse 22 talked about the gracious words of the Lord. The virtuous woman of Proverbs 31, in verse 26, she openeth her mouth, and in it is the law of kindness. And think about kind deeds. Jesus talked about just a cup of cold water. You think about to a very thirsty person what a blessing a drink of water is. People have sent cards and texts and calls, and there have been acts of kindness. People helping with our streaming services, people helping each other, people doing doctor trips, people working with meals with the shut-in, the grieving, the power of little things. They become big things, and God takes notice. But the last thing that I'll mention, when I look back over this year, I have seen the agony of concern. Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 28, the cares of all the churches. I've seen it in the eyes of our elders. The agony of caring, of concern. Philippians chapter 2, Paul talked about the sickness of Epaphroditus. And he talked about how that, you know, the church at Philippi was concerned about Epaphroditus and Epaphroditus was concerned about the church at Philippi being concerned about him. And then there was the concern of Paul for Epaphroditus. You think about not only our elders, but parents and grandparents and, and caring Christians. There's agony of concern. We need concern one for another and compassion one for another. But I'm telling you, it can bring agony sometimes. And I've seen that this year. So, will 2021 be any different because we've lived 2020? I hope it will. Again, that verse in Genesis 30 and verse 27, where Laban said, I have learned from experience. We've experienced a lot of things during the course of this last year, and I hope that these things will prove beneficial in the year to come. You might be in our listening audience and not a member of the Lord's church or someone who's become unfaithful, then we would encourage you to think very seriously about your condition. We're going to sing a song together. 
uh, as we extend the invitation of our Lord. And if there is a need that you have in responding to that invitation, we would encourage you to get with us. Uh, you can call uh, Justin or myself, especially one of our elders, and we would be glad to meet you and to help you with that need as we open God's Word for the answer uh, to your need. Thank you so much for being with us, and now let's sing together. channel on Wednesday evening and there'll be some classes meeting on Zoom. Looking forward to meeting uh, during that time and in those ways. Let's pray together. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are humbled by the fact that we can come before your almighty throne of grace. Thanking you, Father, for this opportunity of worship. Father, we're grateful for the opportunity we can focus on you and take a break from the things in our world. Father, and things that may have our concern and our focus and to realize that you are in control and that you are almighty God and you care for us and love us and we're, we're grateful for that. Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to sit and study with Vance. We pray that we would learn these things and apply these things to our lives and help us to be stronger as a result of that, Father. Help us as we go throughout this week, as we conclude this year, if it be your will, that we may be able to finish strong and do good things and to be the church in this community, Father. I pray for those who are continuing to recover from various illnesses, especially those dealing with COVID. We just pray your blessings will be upon them, be with doctors and family members that are trusted to their care, Father. We pray for the Wilson family and Mayfield family. I pray that you bless them, give them strength, give them comfort as long as you can, Father. Uh, Father, help us now to live this week in view of your grace and your mercy. And it's this prayer we offer through the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs> 